welcome friends. In this video, we are going to be looking at compression. Setting up compression can help you save a lot on storage costs, and in many cases, it can speed up your historical queries. So saving money and time, that is a win-win in my book. Now with time scale DB compression, it is a two-step process. So first you have to enable compression on the table that you want to compress and then you can actually compress the data itself. In this video, we will show you two different ways to compress your data, one being an automatic compression policy, which is the one that we suggest, but we're also going to show you how to compress chunks manually, just so that you have that in your toolbox in case you ever need it. So before we jump right into things, I do want to make a quick note that with timescale DB compression, it is a uh, compression on a chunk by chunk basis. So we're compressing each chunk within our hyper table. Now, because of this, you cannot delete or update data within a compressed chunk. So when we do set up compression and when you set up compression in the future, you want to make sure that you're doing it on data that likely is not going to be changed. All right, we have lots to cover, so let's jump right into things and get compression set up on our table. So let's start by looking at how we can enable compression. So compression on hypertables takes three different parameters. Uh, timescaledb.compress, which is required, and this enables compression on the hypertable. Then we have timescaledb.compress order by, which are columns that are used to order the compressed data. And then timescaledb compress segment by, which is also optional. And these are columns used to group your compressed data. So if we don't specify those two optional parameters, by default, uh, your data will just compress ordered by the hypertables time column. Yeah, cool. So since we likely want to query our stocks table based on time and symbol, we want to en enable our compression like this. So we call alter table stocks real time. So we're altering that stocks real time table. Then we're setting timescale db dot compress, enabling the compression. Then timescale db compress order by, we're setting it equal to time descending. And then for the compressed segment by, we're setting it equal to symbol, right? Because we're we want to make it efficient when we group by that symbol column. All right, so once we run this, boom, compression is enabled. Now we can actually compress our data. So let's first look at automatic compression. So when you set up an automatic compression policy, you're setting up a recurring compression job that will continuously compress your data as time goes on. So similar to the automatic continuous aggregate policy, this is really the set it and forget it option. Uh, also why we recommend using the automatic compression policy. So since we're using stocks data for this tutorial, uh, generally data older than two weeks should never be changed. So we know, right, we wanna probably set up our compression policy on data that's not gonna be changed. <laughs> so in order to set up our automatic policy um, on data older than two weeks, we can use the following commands. So we call select and then add compression policy. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, pretty sweet. It's pretty straightforward, which is awesome. So this add compression policy is what actually adds and sets up that automatic compression policy. And here we're specifying um, two parameters. So here we have the first parameter is the name of the table that we want to set up the policy on. So that's stocks real time. And then we call interval of two weeks. So this lets the system know that we want to compress data that is older than that interval of two weeks. All right, so once we run this query, any chunks that contain data older than two weeks will be compressed and we'll have a new recurring compression policy set up that by default will, will run every single day. Awesome. All right, so next let's look at how to compress tables manually. Again, we suggest to do the automatic compression policy, but sometimes it's good to know manual compression in case you wanna do you know, one-time compression on your hyper table. So this code that I have here is uh, the manual compression equivalent to our automatic policy above. So we're 
I'm calling select compress chunk from show chunks. Let's break it down a little bit. So compress chunk is the function that actually compresses a chunk in your hyper table. And the input or the parameter that you have to specify is the name of the chunk within the hyper table. And in order to get the name of the chunks within the hyper table, that's why we use this show chunks function. So we, the, for the show chunks, we uh, call a table. So in this case, starts with time. And then we say, um, you know, what time interval we want to get all the chunks for, the chunk names for, and in this case, older than interval of two weeks. And then once, you know, we have this show chunks function that kind of gives us actually the names of the chunks that we want to compress, then we can put it into this compress chunk function and, and run through. So again, this is why partially uh, why we recommend the automatic option is that it's just a lot easier. Um, you don't have to, you know, call each individual chunk. Um, I mean, this is like a, qu a quick way of calling each chunk, but still it's a little bit more complex. So, <laughs> um, still, you know, useful and good to know though. So then lastly, I always think it's good to know, right? the actual difference between our before compression total bytes and the after compression total bytes um, to see, you know, how large our table storage is for, you know, the before compression and after compression. And so if we run this, boom, we see we save a lot on storage. It's basically 10 times, you know, less which is awesome. That's really, really cool. Um, and you know, helpful to know. So that's, that's it, you know? Yeah. And there you have it folks. You now have compression set up on your stocks, real time table, super exciting stuff. And we even saw how much we can potentially save on storage. Pretty sweet. And the storage saving does not stop there in the next video. And sadly, the last video in the series, we will be covering retention policies, another great way to save on storage. So if you want to make sure not to miss that video or any of the awesome content coming out of Timescale TV, you'll want to smash that subscribe button. Uh, also, if this video was helpful or if you enjoyed it or, you know, whatever, we um, always appreciate any likes and comments below. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I hope that it was helpful. Uh, and friends, happy coding.